Hello, folks. Welcome to the Daily Locker Room Podcast. Uh, we're back again tonight. We've got Mark back after a bit of a sabbatical there. He's missed him for a few weeks there, Mark Dorn, and we've done this at Ledger here tonight. Lads, nowhere else to start but Crow Park yesterday. Um, probably the first game, probably, you know, was a, was very attritional, typical Ulster for him. We'll chat about that, obviously, in a minute. But the second game, just Dublin and Derry had absolutely everything. Mark, um, you know, from your perspective, like possibly in my in my only personal opinion, it was one of the best games of football I've seen in a long, long time. It just it just had everything. It was in trolling. Yeah, look, to be fair, it was absolutely brilliant. And I know I probably get caught them. I know I was sitting playing a few slut neil people. <laughs> and when Dublin actually scored the equalizer and goal I sort of went, yes. And I know three or four of them looked, but it wasn't that I just wanted to go to extra time, you wanted more of it. It was absolutely brilliant. Like it was just like like we're very quick and people are very quick to moan about Gaelic football and this and that and the rules and this. But like when you watch yesterday, like why was yesterday so good? Because it was just two teams who just went man to man. I think we're saying man to man, but it was literally Derry at 15 behind the ball and Dublin push it, made it man to man, vice versa. It was man to man all over the field, but it was just like it was absolutely brilliant. When you see two teams like that, their skill level, like tactically, Everything was just attitude. Everything was just on the line. Like, but I do think Derry did need to win the game more. Mm. Just for I know Dublin personnel probably had a few missing, so Derry probably did, and they probably looked they did should they should have won the game in normal mm. time, full time, and look, look they did do it. They did do it anyway. Like, but look, it was a, just for being there, and it was absolutely brilliant. Like for a league final. Look, it's the best game of football I've seen in a long, long probably the best game. It's better. I thought the Kerry and, or Kerry and Derry game last year was a brilliant semi final, but yesterday was far, far better. Mm. Derry, good hobby to get into Daniel winning games and penalty kicks. They won the McKenna Cup semi final last year in penalties. Uh, they beat Armagh in the Ulster final in penalties and, and, uh, and won obviously the, the, the National League on penalties. Uh, just before we talk about the game, let's penalties. Do, do you agree with them? Do you think they had a bit of drama, a bit of excitement? Yeah, I, I have no issue. I have no issue, particularly, to be honest. I mean, it, it's, it is what it is. You know, I, I saw a few people saying it's, it's not a skill of the game. Well, there are penalties in the game. We saw a shame yeah, in the yeah. one in the first half. So I, I'm okay with it. Like, anything that adds anything that adds a bit of drama to it. Like, mm. I think it was, was Mona and Armagh last year. It wasn't a great game, but the penalties added a real bit of, a real bit of buzz at the end of it. So I'm, I'm kind of okay with it. Like, it's the same rule for everyone. So... I, I, I don't know I don't know what the alternative is like like forty fives maybe or something like that or to do in the sevens where you have forty fives forty fives probably suit you better because I remember you stepped up to hit a penalty against Longford a few years back in in, in a crucial national league game and hit the post didn't you? Uh, yeah, if no one else is putting their hand up, Steve. It's like it's a pity. When no <laughs> but but um, Daniel, from from the match's perspective, Dorney talked about it there. Like Derry did of the game one for me, they had it won two or three times, and like Dublin showed obviously the reason why they're all in the champions, why we've been talking about them, why we've been utilizing over them here in the show over the last number of weeks we've been talking about kick passing I thought that this, that this just some of the football even the kick passing like and we'll, we'll talk about that in a wee second in comparison to the other finals like but they were they were huge showed huge levels of resilience in that game Don. yeah and, and look I, I've seen kind of people talking about what, what it meant in the grand scheme of the year already and kind of Dublin missing this person that person and look we, we let other people do that but just analysing the game for what it was I think Dublin will actually be delighted with that uh, I thought Desi's comments afterwards were really interesting. That they, they felt they were the 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 media had built built up a, bit, a better version of where they are. I'm actually I I think they're in a really good place after it because for me the secondary cast for Dublin were excellent. Who I was very suspect of. Um, mm. yeah. I thought Key Murphy was outstanding. Yeah, Sean McMahon yeah. really good. Uh, yeah. Tom Laft comes up with two points. Really really good. Um, like I I think that's really important for Dublin because Fenton didn't fire. Uh, I, I thought Conor Callan probably lost his battle with Chrissy. I thought uh, Kilkenny was quiet. I thought uh, Shane McGuigan went to town on Merchant, to be honest with you. So for all those lads not to be firing and Dublin still to be chipping in around there at the end, I thought it was really impressive. Like Der Der Derry should have walked away. I, I think the first half, the goal the goal was, I think, poor for more Lynch. Um, and, and that kept Dublin in it. Like the, yeah. the, no, None of Dublin's goals were really created. They were they were lucky, whereas Derry's goals were, were manufactured a little bit better. Um, I I just thought I thought it was an absolutely cracking game of football. It really was. We kind of we kind of said it last week that we'd expect both teams to be going hammer and tongs because Derry needed to win, as you said. I think it's really important they got they got the they get into the habit of beating big teams and being comfortable in that position. And I just think it's amazing. I don't know if you remember we played them in a challenge game in the winter of twenty 
18. Up in, up in Mayo Bridge. Yeah. Mayo Bridge, and they were preparing yeah. for Division 4. We were preparing, preparing for Division 3. And a lot That's of right. the players, like, it's, it is some nod for really good training condition and, and really good yeah. cuts. Yeah, yeah, and and Tony, or Daniel talked about Brian Fenton there. You know, obviously Fenton's a class act, a brilliant footballer, and you know we 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 can talk about the sending off, whatever. You know, those are individual moments that happen. Like, but like he's up against probably the best midfield in the country. You know, for me, Glass and Rogers complement each other so well, and it's 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 funny that Derry lost their their only game in the National League when when Connor wasn't playing. Mark, you know, that the influence that that man has on games is just. It's outrageous, Tony. It's outrageous. Yeah, look, it is. And the, look, whenever there's a ball that needs to be won, or whenever there's a break that needs to be won, or whenever yeah. there's a cover knack to doing the full back line, he's there. But like a lot of people probably, and to be fair, you have to give Mickey Hart and Horse serious credit. Like, because everybody thought Connor Glass going to be up again, Fenton, but it was actually Brenton Rogers went and Fenton, like, and like Brenton Rogers was probably his best game for Derry since last yeah. year's Ulster semi final like in Armagh. Like, mm-hmm. I think Dan, like, like Kenneth Kenny, Connor Doherty. Never like he had Kieran Kilkenny done the serious, serious job on them. Derry, all their matchups, right? But like watching Fent, like just you're probably right, like you are right. Connor Lass and Brent Rogers probably are the best midfield partnership at the yeah. minute. But the one thing, like, and I think I said this a few shows back, I didn't, I always used to think, Jesus, Connor Lass is good as he, as it look, you know, people say, yes, I was only in the scene a couple of times last year with Flair, and then I've seen him again, Glenn and Slot Neil, and seen Derry a few games, and he just, the work he does, the, like he just does serious, serious work. And there's actually one time, I guess near the end, Connor Lane gave a free again. Mm-hmm. I'm like, and it was textbook title. You could see him coming behind a near hand title, and it was a brilliant title. He burst 50 yards making that near hand title, and Connor Lane gave a free again, and it was very, very bad call. But like he probably is the most famous <laughs> footballer in Ireland. I don't know if anybody's had a better. Eight months, you think, but he's had won the last eight months playing the name. Yeah. Like Jordan, Jordan Burns made reference to that in the speech, didn't he? He talked about he's, the yeah, the year I did that just had. yeah, but just yeah. funny enough with the wave the public, like Jordan Burns, even he, I thought, like it was a serious, that was a brilliant speech to make for a president. Like, when would you ever see a GA president? And you just, I just, you just, you especially, just especially because Jordan, especially because Jordan's such a shy person too, as well. Like, he'd be very quiet, you know, and, and humble, yeah, but like you, you and him, same, <laughs> same genius, but like. He just see he was probably the adrenaline got the better of him, but they come back to the match, like it was just had uh, everything, like physicality, battles, all of it. And you could even see a wee bit of Mar- the Marley and all at the end of it, but you just shit that's two teams who know were level here, very, very yeah. close. Yeah. And they're just and like you mentioned the Brian Clinton <clears throat> said that probably looking replay. There was no sending off look, he probably you know, probably called him late and Brian him and back, but it was a push. Like it, I wouldn't say Let, let's, let's talk about let's talk about Connor Lane for a bit, right? So, not here to bash referees, far from it, because you know I, I obviously tweeted after the game, it's a bit disappointing. I I seen something in 2018 ledge in the All Ireland final, and I, I I was mystified of this. Keen O'Sullivan went off with a hamstring injury, and he jogged across to shake his hand, you know. And then I heard stories that you know he was sort of socialising with Dublin players and n- nightclubs in Dublin and stuff like that after the game and things like that. You know, and obviously Dublin do carry a, an aura. I remember Alex Ferguson, Sam Allardyce used to say with Bolton came to Old Trafford, the big teams get all the big calls from the referees, you know, because the referees seem to have the, sort of an aura or an error of sort of like, you know, I don't know what it is about it, but, you know, sometimes they can influence referees a little bit better. Jim Gavin was very good at soft word in the linesman's ear, just a wee quiet word because it's Jim Gavin. You know, it's, it's probably going to carry more weight than me or you or, or Ledge. Like, but... I, I was actually looking that day and I thought, I couldn't believe it. I'd never seen a referee do that before. And then in 2019, Daniel, Anton Sullivan driv his two hands into Turlock's chest in a National League game in Offaly. I don't know if you remember it. And actually put Turlock on his ass. Like, Turlock, who's an absolute gentleman, yeah, he probably got a bad name of me alongside him on the line. But but Anton pushed him two hands. And Connor Lee and Dorney was standing right beside him. And I says, Jesus, Connor, you, you player can't put a hand on the manager. And he turned around and he goes, shut the fuck up. That's what he said to Turlick, right? Shut the fuck up. And I just sort of thought to myself, like, that's, like, you give respect, get respect. But, like, there's a way off, Hannah. And I just never really, from then, did I really take a real warming to him. Like, but I just think as an official. Whereas I'm looking at Paul Falloon referee in the Division 2 final. A lot more humble. It's not about him. He does his business in a quiet way. Paul speaks to the players. You can see him saying, look, calling the player over. Maybe Rian O'Neill or Oshin, come here for a wee second. You know, first name, chatting. Like, there's no this arrogance. Like, And I just felt Lane stank of arrogance the other day, Daniel. I don't know about you, but I just thought, I just didn't like his performance. I really didn't, but, you know. Yeah, and, and look, I, I'm probably a little bit biased in this one as well. I would have had a not too pleasant experience with him when we played Tyrone in, in a qualifier um, not to get in, into any salacious talk, but again, you talk about respect. But anyway, long story short, just looking at the game and his the way he refereed it, 
I thought the players did actually quite well that they served up such a game given the nature of his whistle. Like, I mean, you just didn't know sometimes what was going to happen, what was going to be a free, what wasn't going to be a free. Like, we've, we've spoken an awful lot about just, we just want consistency. If a referee is going to whistle soft, fair enough, no problem. But do it the whole time. If they're going to whistle slow, that's fine, but do it the whole time. And yeah. I just felt, yeah, I, I, I don't particularly like his style of refereeing. I know that maybe some people do, I'm not sure, but I, I, I felt he took away from the game sometimes. And probably the, the incident with Fenton, like, I, I don't think, like, yeah, look, it was a, a bit of a punch in the stomach trying to play the slap at a ball, nothing major. Um, from Euna Mulholland, doesn't it? But like, even put your hand up for an advantage. I think that takes the sting out of Fenton, then a small bit, but he gave nothing, and then that led to the reaction. And look, I, I just, I, I'm not a fan of how he referees. I, I don't. I, I, I think he takes away from the game. And again, look, we're not ref- referee bashing or anything like that, but we can only analyze what we see on the day. And I, I thought, I, I didn't think he was hectic. Now, to be honest, like if you're Tony, if you're coming in on a, on a Monday after coaching a team and you've lost. And you have responsibility and the, you're chatting to the chairman and the chairman says, you know what, like that wasn't great the other day. And, you know, there's a conversation and then there's a conversation among us. You're accountable, right? You're accountable. Same with players, you know, they're accountable, travel and media, et cetera. But referees are a protected species, right? And there doesn't seem to be any accountability at all. Like, should Conor Neal not have to go maybe say to a referee's meeting on a Tuesday night and say, right, can you maybe just explain those decisions, Conor? And like try and work together. I'm not saying like get called out on it, but get the referees together and say, right, a couple of decisions over the weekend, do you think they think this was a foul or moving forward, how do you think we can improve it? And surely, maybe they are doing that, I don't know, but it just seems to be this protective speed, just no accountability, they can march off into the sunset, having such a massive influence in the game, and don't you even heard Mickey Hart, who had won the game, how disappointed he was when you listened to his interview with Conor Lane's performance like. <clears throat> yeah, look, and it, look, we have, like, referees, no fact, like, referees can cost, they cost, they do cost team seasons, they do, and there is a look. If you look in the Premier League, the last couple of years, probably they haven't done the route of question referees. And if a referee is a bad day at the office, he's took off a game. But going down the GA route, maybe you hold, you've seen the whole thing about fitness test and that sort of the year, and they're maybe struggling for numbers. And I don't see the GA going down that route, unfortunately, because if you see, you see in their own county, like they're crying out clubs, every yeah. county board's crying out for referees. And I suppose a referee. Thinking, well, I'm not going to be stand took a, or going to be made a full lap to maybe do a game and I'm going to be questioned in every decision. I'm not doing it, even though that's the right way to do it. I don't think that's ever going to happen. So maybe referees are professional and I don't see them going down that route. But like it, it would be something that would make the game a lot better because I have no doubt there is referees mm-hmm. out there and they do say, and they do say with the big counties and the big players. Like I remember having a game. Last year, Clare were involved in the game. It's actually, I don't want to say the game. I don't want any game because everybody know the referee. But the Clare boys referred to that after the game about how pally the referee was during the game with the opposition players and laughing and joking. And it was nearly that the Clare players just thought they were getting a raw, raw deal. If they went to speak to them, they were told more or less, shut up and bring that up. Whereas the opposition team went and spoke. I look, I mess, we played Dublin and Crow Park. That's it was the National League game last year. And after the game, a lot of the Clare players with Jerome Henry thought the uh, dubs were first name prep. And whenever a Clare man mentioned something, it was shut up and bring the ball up 20 yards. So there is, look, the big, big thing. But it would be a right thing to do, a referee, somebody going. But there is assessors and all going against. But I don't know what what way it is. But like some of Conor Lane's decisions yesterday were baffling. And, like, and they were particularly hard on Derry. And you look, I actually thought he did bring the double back into the game a few Few decisions mm. just brought them back in. But look, to be fair to Derry, they kept ahead. And you could see Mickey Hart at the end of normal time. And to be fair to Conor Lane, it was probably a hard enough decision. Orn Lynch get a, a quick free. And I think it was Gilmore lost in the tackle. And somebody came across Conor Doherty and tackled down slow. At the time, I remember sitting at home and thinking that's free all day long. But it was only last night when it was slowed down. So you would maybe give him the benefit of the doubt in that mm. decision. But there's a lot of other decisions. Yeah, we're sitting going, Jesus, yeah. that's very, very harsh. But it seemed to be very, very harsh on Dublin, or sorry, in Derry all the time. It was never always harsh there in Dublin. Yeah, I think I think just what everybody wants, Daniel talked about it there, is, is just consistency. You know, you just want that level of consistency that if you know, remember Clive Woodward in 2003, Daniel, when England won the Rugby World Cup, like he had a backroom team. It's probably the very first sort of well-documented backroom team of 30-odd men. And two of them were actually 
like a referee's analysis. So they would they would analyze what the referee was going to allow in the mall or the rock or whatever, what he was going to allow in on, on certain things in a scrum, you know, and, and they had that down to a T. And Tony, it's a bit like even down, like if Paul's referee in your game and down club football, you know he's going to let it flow. You know, yeah, you're you know, away with a bit more physicality. Whereas if, say, Ronan Barry or something's referee in the game who's more of a technical referee, you're going to have a hundred whistles a half. You know, so you have to different referees. But as you say, lads, you just want consistency. That's what you want across the board. And if Conor Lane's going to referee the game like that, that's fair enough. But make sure it's it's refereed like that on a, on a consistent basis for both teams. You know, Daniel, just on the Desi Farland interview. Uh, he felt that you know both teams were going to go man to man, which they did a lot of the game. You know, there was a lot of there was a lot of one v one duels. Uh, there was also a lot of good defending as well. There was also a lot of good Dublin up. There was a lot of good good work from Derry to to force Dublin into certain alleys and things like that. So it wasn't just necessarily T teams out man to man for the whole game. There was a, a huge tactical element too. But he talked about the 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 lack of. Um, their, their disappointment at maybe getting a hold on the kickouts, you know, which is an interesting one because it's something that Dublin pride themselves on. And it's the first time Dublin have probably been caught ledge with the over the top kickouts since Donegal 2014, probably maybe 10 years ago, you know, and they were caught they were caught a couple of times for it. What was your take yeah, on the kickouts? Yeah. Um we, we always talk about the risk reward on kickouts. Like, you know, you, you are taking the chance and, and I I I think they had to do it really, to be honest with you, because you can't, as we've talked about a good bit in this, you can't give Derry softball from from kickouts. Like so, they they had to go after Derry, and for for large periods, I thought it was actually working quite well. But I like I I think against most other teams, that kickout press is it works absolutely perfectly. I don't think there's an issue. But the reality was, you're 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 putting two teams up against each other who are incredibly well matched, and 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 probably Derry a little bit more so even. And it's like. I, I think we'll talk about Division Two later, but I, I think both games really sparked on the kickouts. That was when we saw yeah. the spark. I thought I thought that that Derry's kind of third quarter um kind of burst came from kickouts, came from just long direct kickouts and flooding runners through the middle. Like for all the nuance you can have with kickouts, there, there wasn't anything overly technical, but I, I, I think that's what Dublin have to do. And and I think it's a brilliant learning for them. Like I think if that was an All-Ireland final, I'd say they probably drop one out of the main press. I'd say they 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 leave a centre back sitting in behind, and I'd say they probably they, they they try and split a little bit more. Let's say after about ten minutes of the second half, because it was it was quite clear that they were under pressure. I think that's really good learning for Dublin longer term. Um, yeah. like you, you you maybe you pop James McCarthy back in there on the middle, and and one or two others, and all of a sudden maybe those breaks aren't being like Derry were dominating breaks insofar as where the ball was breaking. I thought, um, maybe that doesn't happen with different individuals, but. I, I I thought I thought that's where the game sparked. I thought Dublin actually really lost their way on both sides of the kickoff. Do you think do you think the championship will see Cluxon return or oh hundred percent. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah. You you'll yeah. see you'll see Clux and James McCarty, Mick Fitzsimons. Um yes. I know we're not gonna talk about these lads, but you, you probably Lee Gannon will pop back in there, Paul Manuel will be fully fit. Like you could see a like a, a probably five different players starting in an All Ireland final. It's just an awful pity we're probably not going to see a game of that quality again until not hard the final, you know. Yeah, Donny, it is it's scary the, the the abundance of riches that Dublin have, isn't it? Like it's really scary. Like Colin Basquial came in last week, like and scored two four, I think it was. He got the first goal, he got the opening goal on Sunday as well. You know, it's 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 ridiculous. Like the the, the strength and depth that they have in the bench is scary, isn't it? Yeah, and they're that's for sure that's why I think it was vital Derry won the game yesterday, because if Derry had a loss that game yesterday. And there we sitting saying, we're near full pelt here, we're less here, and look at the men, these have to come back. So it was actually vital for Dublin yeah. to do it. But the, but to be fair, look, it, it, you, them boys all have to come back, but you just don't know what condition they're going to come back. The James McCarthy's going to be, even though these boys look after themselves immediately, like the Simmons are definitely going to be there. They're still a year older, and uh, will live the same same hunger. And the boys that look Desi Farr playing yesterday probably were out trying to prove a point here, I need this jersey. But like Desi Farr walked away from yesterday, I've noticed the mo- I would say he is actually delighted, even though he never met this Dublin loss the game yesterday, because he gives him some stick to beat them and look further mm-hmm. down the line. He is going to be hoping and praying they meet Dublin or Derry in the semi final, the final, and they'll never be caught like Lark the Lark and Marbury, the goal chance he had, like it was identical to Ryan McHugh's goal, Donny yeah. Gall, like, but yeah. I, I, I agree. But I actually thought it was yes, the press was good, but they were so naive. Yes, it may. Oh, like how wide open the middle was. Yes, keep yeah. the but just blood flows, go Nara instead of just wide. And you, you get the big lynch to be fair to him. He kicked two straight out over the press and double. It was actually the second half. Derry got serious, serious joy out of it. It wasn't as mm-hmm. legs, it wasn't as tight. It just flick on and the runners coming in, but it was like just so wide open. Like, and no doubt, Desi Forrest leaving yesterday going, we're in a brilliant, brilliant place. 
Yeah, it's interesting though because Dublin, like Derry celebrations, Daniel, like they were actually quite muted. And I read an article today actually that you know one of the backroom teams sprinted out, you, you know, sprinted out towards the the, the field at the final whistle, and then when he realised everyone was just sort of Kiama, you know, and, and that was just, and I think that's a big statement from Derry too, lads. You know that they're not going to overhate this. And Mickey Hart's just <laughs> Mickey Hart's like you know he's one of the best in the business, obviously at at. You know, from from a psycho psychologically point of view, like psychology point of view, he's going to be thinking, you know, over celebrating a national league when it's going to come back to bite you in the ass, particularly Dublin. Like, so it's interesting, you know. It it was uh, it was actually funny after after the last penalty miss, you could see Orrin Lynch on the ground, kind of screaming and kind of roaring, and then he was waiting for someone to run into him, and all the boys were just there shaking hands, and he kind of had to just quieten down yeah. fairly quick and get up and grab his gloves and go, but. It's uh, I actually think I saw a selector even kind of telling the boys not to run in and to, to, to slow down because there was there was yeah. a kind of a line of handshakes nearly before that. Yeah, Paul McFlynn, he gets take Paul McFlynn that you on a very talent, you can see the two arms down, jam it down, even though it was a serious game to win. But he had run out the minute ball hit the post and apparently and just told it. And it, it Derek there to be fair, them just but it, funny enough, with a conversation with Shane McGregor a couple of weeks ago, and it was just. Like, make no mistake, yes, they wanted to win the McKenna Cup, they wanted to win the league, but the only thing in their head is Donny Gall, the 21st of April. Yeah. I did, and yeah. maybe something quite, I, you maybe would know this, Stevie, and maybe I'm wrong here, but has Mickey Hart beat Jim McGinnis in Championship football yet? Uh, I think he has, yeah, he has. Has he? He has because remember Jimmy reading Jimmy's book where he talked about the obsession of beating Tyrone, like you know, and beating Mickey. Ah, like, the first year, yeah. Jimmy's first year. Did they not beat Tyrone the semi final and Dublin beat them in the second year? Yeah, in the second year, Buster. they beat Tyrone again. They beat down in 2012 in the final. Ah, yeah. so, so, ah, so I'm just thinking, McGinnis, I maybe I'm I don't think Mickey's beat them in championship football. It's interesting. Must find that out. Must find I don't, out. Mickey, Mickey did reference it at the end of the game that we talked about. You know the the quality of opposition and and obviously the quality of the manager they have and I suppose it's a nice lead in then lads to to the division two final. I didn't see Ledge an awful lot different about Donegal. I thought that the game was very attritional. I thought it was Donegal pressed Armagh. They went with a zonal press and kickouts forced Armagh to go long a number of times as well and probably weren't getting the short kickouts away. They have been getting away even the league game we watched Daniel. I think Donegal probably took a lot more learnings from that than than Armagh did. Disappointed with Armagh Ledge, and it was really only when the bench came in, the stakes Stephen Campbell, Ashin O'Neill, O'Neill, Rain O'Neill. Like when these guys came in and the shackles came off, it sort of seemed as if, you know, it brought the best out of Armagh for that wee 10 minute period, you know? And you were sort of thinking yeah. to yourself, like, would, would it have been great to bring this intensity maybe early in the game? I thought the game was very passive, Daniel. I don't know what, what it was. I just I thought the first half was horrible to watch. Like it was really passive, like, really passive. Yeah. Do you know what? It wasn't a million miles from the league game. It was kind of yeah. similar enough, sort yeah. of. A, a, and look, we said this last week in the podcast. We weren't expecting a ripper. Like you know, it was yeah. never going to be. It was never going to be wide open. I I got the feeling both teams are are thinking much further down the line. To be honest with you, are thinking about Ulster Championship. They're not. I I I don't think full full throttle was on. Yesterday. It was no. common. It was common. Won a Division Two title last year. Uh, they beat Galway in the final in Crow Park, and like there was. There was hardly a whimper from them, like you know. There was hardly like a, a there was there was no real big celebrations or anything. And then obviously it was common then, you know, lost the first round of the championship, then to second in the championship to Galway. So I suppose like it is, they're probably thinking, you know, we we could be meeting each other further down the line here. You know? Yeah, and, and and even not not just like uh, leaving leaving players off. And I know McGinney said there was a bug in the camp, but in order to train, look, you have to take that at face value as well. But it actually it did look like there was something. They, they were very very flat, like. The, yeah. the thing with Johnny Gall is, I, I've said this to you before. Like, I I don't think Armagh's problem is breaking down mass defenses. Mass defense, it's just yeah. Not, yeah, it's just not natural to them. Um, <laughs> I don't think they're comfortable keeping possession. I don't think they're comfortable playing that kind of running game. I, I I think they'd much prefer to be a little bit more direct. But what do you do when a team doesn't give you that direct option? And Johnny Gall never gave that direct direct option. They were plugging gaps. They were getting in a fairly heavy blanket for most of it. And this is where Donegal or our man need to add another string to your ball. You, you can't be dictated. Your forward play can't be dictated by how a defensive system is set up in front of you. You have to have other strings to your ball that it says, well, if they're playing 14 in a zone, we're going to do, we're going to overload sides. We're going to get runners from the sideline. We're going to have this plan. If they go man-to-man -man press, we're going to go long direct early. You, you have to have something else. And I just don't think our man look comfortable. And if our man meet Donegal again, you can be guaranteed it'll be more the same because Donegal are saying, well, we just clog this up, be patient. Like, Donegal football is much more comfortable playing that through-the-hand game. I mean, it's, you go up to Donegal and try and play in that weather, it's, it's, it's what they have to do most of the time, you know. It, it, it's, it's, not, it's not suitable for, for open freestyle football, but 
I, I, I'd be, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure where our are, are at yet, really. You know, I don't think we've seen the full whack of them. Yeah, Donny, Kieran Thompson, great game, centre half forward, kicked some brilliant points as well. Uh, that was his hundredth appearance for Donny Gall. They were missing a serious amount of quality, Donny, as well. You know, Van Gallagher, Cole, yeah. McBrady, like the, there was a there was a host of men missing, and you were sort of thinking to yourself, great opportunity for our man maybe to, to to put a marker down, get a get a league title, you know, and obviously take the, a bit of a pressure. There's probably a element now, it's probably a little bit of pressure now on, on McGinney maybe heading the Ulster Championship, particularly the yeah. side of the draw that he's in, you know, and down like down weren't great, and we'll talk about down like, but Town will probably fancy their chances against Armagh, like, you know, if, yeah. if obviously Down beat Antrim and Armagh beat Fermanagh, obviously. Yeah, look, I don't think that's a foregone conclusion, but come back to the game yesterday, I was actually very, very dis. I know, yes, that maybe May in second never got no bits to three and I've looked, but I think, come back to the same thing, Jim again is probably delighted because of the quality, the quality that Donegal hadn't played and the young boys have introduced, like, Niall, Niall O'Donnell's a massive, massive, like, Niall O'Donnell and Pat O'Rogan are massive for Donegal. Yes, they like they were, and they didn't play last year. Like they're big, big players. McGinnis is probably going home and thinking, I can get everybody on bond. Paddy Birdie, Ryan McHugh, Brent McCall, get everybody back. They do have serious, serious quality. Look, they will. Mm -hmm. That's the one test. I think if Donny goals at full tilt, they're the one team in Ulster who will test Derry. Now, I'm not saying they'll beat them, but they will give Terry their stents or their stents 10. But yesterday, like 55 minutes, I'll be honest. And it was a wee bit like mm -hmm. Saturday night. I was bored. I was like, mm. it was just, yeah. this is just the same, same mm. and now, the game broke out because Armagh were four points down decided, now we'll it. just go. Yeah. I had to chase and it. Like, yeah. And to be fair, to Armagh, like, Armagh's actually, I don't know why, this, but they're, Armagh's very good when they go after things. Yeah. Like when they, when they got, and you can think back to the Ulster final last year, like Armagh did, they went after Derry and they, they were the play and it's not structured, it's just, I'm no doubt the last year in their I, head. I think, lads, I, I think I think the game has slightly shifted a wee bit now, lads, right? And I know Ulster is going to sort of probably go back to, you know, you'll revert the type. When when two Ulster teams meet, there's a sort of an attritional feel to it, Daniel. You know, there's a sort of a, a feeding out period. They'll sit deep, you know, they'll not allow space. Like, But but for me, right, when a team is sort of throwing the ball around the halfway line, right, when, when you've got four or five men across the halfway line, and the ball's just been passed across, 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 Surely you have to step out and put heat on that. Like, like surely you have to. Like, pressure creates panic, and like just sitting in, it's nearly death by a thousand cuts. Like, you know, you're just sitting in and you're waiting for the. And it, it's, as Dorney says, like it, it can become very hard to watch. And I think that's one of the reasons why football does get a sort of a negativity surrounding at different times. Obviously, Sunday will will have will have lifted a lot of negativity. You know, the Dublin Derry game, but. Like to watch that for fifty five minutes, it, it it it's it's very very attritional, isn't it? Like. Yeah, it it is, and and I agree with you totally. Like it's the the like the if you if you sit in against a Dublin, a Derry, a Kerry, it won't work. If you sit in against a Mayo, you'll probably beat them. Mayo Mayo haven't got the tools to break down any kind. Like they're they're hopeless <laughs> in that scenario. Mm -hmm. Armagh are not wonderful at it. Donny Gall will break you down probably eventually because they're so used to playing that. That that works against an awful lot of teams still, and I and I think that's why you'll see so much of it. Like you'll you might see Monaghan doing a good bit of that in the Ulster Championship this year. Yeah, I don't think that's going to go out of the game. But yet, like, you, Dan, you, Dan, I'll probably yeah. interrupt you. But like, you're saying Armagh, like I like Armagh, probably the one team have the tools in my age too. You know, a team that sits in. Like mm. you, if you have Andy Murnion, how many how many balls how many balls did Armagh kicking and top Andy Murnion yesterday? Mm. Mm. That one. Not one, like you're, I look at Andy Murray and they only brought Rain on. You imagine you put Rain, Andy Murray, even Nash and O'Neill, if they're struggling to break a blanket down, you put them three boys at six foot plus. Well, go back to the Ulster semi final last year again, down. They got four goals. Yeah. Where did yeah. four come from? Yeah, direct ball. Yeah, love but yesterday I was surprised with Brent McCone not playing. Yesterday I says, first 10 or 15 minutes. They'll test. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, but then the other, the, the, other, the, other, the other side of it is the other side of it as well. If if you go long and direct, and you have men up the field, and the ball breaks down, you can put pressure on higher up the field. Then you know, and and if and if worst case scenario, if the opposition turn you over, you're still a hundred meters from your own goal. You know, and it is worth. It's definitely worth three or four half lads. Like it has to be. Like Dublin have done it. You know, Derry are doing it. Like 
the top teams are doing it like they're mixing their game up, you know. But I, I just thought, I thought Armagh, I thought it was a very predictable the way the game was 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 taking shape after ten minutes. It was so predictable what was going to happen. I thought Donegal, you know, I thought I did think that Armagh were going to win. We tipped them last week. I I really I think everybody. I I never hear one person tip Donegal. No, no, not one. one. Missing, so no. that's why I think Jim McGinn is as a game yes, he will be delighted. He'll be thinking, yeah, Jesus, I think we bet the Desi far even though Dubs were beat. Our second strings, we have we have good boy, we have a squad here. Yeah. There's no doubt McGinnis and I think a lot of these young boys like we have a squad here. We have a well, good he's a, he's, squad. He's a there. serious weapon. He's a serious weapon in Crow Park and Sean Patton. Sean Patton is an unbelievable uh restart man. Like he's he's phenomenal. Like his restarts, some of his restarts in Somni were, were were top notch down there. Top notch, like yeah, and, and look, he, he's, I, I think probably Armagh struggling that side of it a bit when they didn't get him away short, but Pat can give it to you short, he'll give it to you long, he'll, he'll threaten yeah. you up the top, if you push yeah. too hard, he'll go beyond you, he'll go to society, you know, he's top class, but yeah. I, I just just back to the Armagh thing for a second, like, I I think it goes against their, good, like, let's say they, they plant Reno O'Neill and, and, and um, Andy Martin inside, and Donegal play a double sweeper in front, they will not go long and direct, I guarantee you. They will plod around the middle third and try and run balls through hands, which I don't think they're good. They're they're they're, they're particularly good at. Armagh Arma are fantastic in that chaos. They need that chaos, I think. And this is this is what I'm kind of like. I, I we can only base off what we've seen so far, and this is two games we've seen against Donegal live that they really struggled. And off now, maybe this is the maybe this is the rope adult. Maybe you could they'll meet them in Ulster Championship and go and start booming fairly early. I just think long and direct will be. Will be predictable eventually, and and Donegal will probably be prepared for that. I I think you need another string to that bow, which I'm not sure to have yet. I'm not sure, like even we we talked about Down's running power and and the way they structure their attacks from from out to in. There is running power from out to in. I'm not sure Armagh quite have that in in their in their arsenal. Maybe we'll come to championship and they possibly will. I don't know, but maybe so. Derry and Donegal don't need to be interesting. Like it'll be interesting. Like like now, I think it'll take I think it'll take a very very similar shape to the McKenna Cup final. I think Donegal are going to do what they did on Sunday. They're going to sit in with a deep and deep block. It's going to be organised. It's going to be zonal. They're going to have everyone behind the ball. Then they're going to try and press as many kickouts as they can, which which could be to, to their detriment. But you know, it's it's going to be a very very clear game plan. It is, but if you think back in the McKenna Cup game, because I actually went to that the first for ten or fifteen minutes, Donegal went in a high press again a couple of times, but Derry got quick kick out so away, and Donegal went in a real high press. I remember we talked about mm. this. Come championship time, not a hope. Well, yeah. Donny Gold. No, they're, they're not trying to press Derry from open play. And like, as you think, them. like at the Enoma, they never <clears> man Mark Shane McGuigan. They never mat. They were in Jones, yeah. and I don't think they'll do that again. There'll be there'll be certain people will be sent to match look at them. Yes, mm-hmm. but at the minute, that's the game. Like that is the game. That's the game that's going to like everybody's just looking at that game and going. To, especially if Donny Gold get a few of them, but like Ryan McHugh is hopefully going to be back for. Cole's going to be back for two McFadden only came on yesterday. McBurdy's going to be back. Like, if they're at full health, and you even think you mentioned Sean Patton there, but even Big Lynch, like it's just everywhere. There's so mm. many, so many, but I still do think, and look, and this maybe, but I think Derry are a country male. I'm not saying a country male. Donny Gall's probably, yes, I think on their day could get him again, but see the rest in Ulster, I don't see yeah. them anywhere near. Well, there was, there was a, an Ulster team involved on Saturday night, obviously our own county down, and probably the quality, you could actually see the quality of the divisions, couldn't you? You know, watching them, you know, you had one, you had two, you had three, and you had four. I would actually probably beg to argue that three was probably the worst final of all four. Um, I thought Leash displayed a really positive kick-passing game. Daniel, we've talked, game. <laughs> yeah, we've talked about this so ledge, like, you know, Evan O'Carroll, obviously, we'll chat about Leash in a minute, like, but Evan O'Carroll, Paul Kingston, some good forwards, like, but the, straight away, they set the tone from the first attack Leash had. It was a long diagonal ball into Evan O'Carroll, like, from 50, 60 metres out. It was 2v1, but he won it, turn, spun, and, and, and smash one off the crossbar. But Saturday night, ledge, like, the Division 3 final for me as a down supporter, I was down at the match and I really, really wanted them to win. I really wanted them to win just because I think it would have given the whole thing a boost. You know, I think there's there's been there's been a decent look to them this year, albeit Division 3 has been very poor. Some of the teams in Division 3 this year have obviously had a high turnover of players, so they haven't really been playing teams of, of a real high calibre. But Westmead sat in with a deep defensive block and we had no ideas, Lich. We had no ideas. We never tried to kick the ball once. Everything was through the hands. Pressing every single kick out when when you don't have a really, really, two really good outstanding midfielders. Owen Murdoch is, is a generational player for down, but the kid is only 21. You know, you sort of need him at you need him at eleven, you need him at fourteen, and you need two of them at eight and nine, in my, in my opinion. Like, but 
it just felt it just felt like another like Jesus like Talchin Cup last year. You know, it was nearly a nearly a carbon copy. And the one thing that I was worried about from a dying perspective, and I'm sure Connor would be worried about this too, was that when the goal went in, it was a bit of adversity. There was a serious lack of leadership on the field. Like, you know, nobody to fucking take the game of the scruff of the neck and say, you know what, let's let's stand up here, chest out, heads back, let's dig in. You know, and it was poor ledge. It was poor. Yeah, um, we we kind of mentioned this last week on the podcast that I I felt they're missing a bit of a bit of man size and a bit of man strength around the middle. You know that they're they're a lot of very similar athletic yeah. sort of runners, um, but they're missing that bit of brawn. Um, I I kind of said I wasn't sure. Let's say if the shit hit the fan, what the leadership circle was like. And again, that was just as an outsider's comment. You know more than me, but just from what I'm seeing, when things go wrong, and I'm kind of picking up a bit of that from last year in the meet in the meet game. No one took the game when things went poorly. Um, I I thought at the weekend, I thought they were going to run away with it after 15 minutes. And yeah. they were really sharp. They, they, they were getting runners. They were all the things that we'd seen them being really good at throughout the throughout the league. They, they were in a bit of flow. I was thinking, Jesus, this could be Anthony. They want all the need. Like a, a goal would have, game was game was done then. If Westmead had to chase the game at all, it was, it was game over. Um Westmead, I, to be fair, right? I, I, and, this, and this is my point earlier about low blocks still working and blanket defences still work. Eventually, Westmead just I thought fouled and fouled and fouled and fouled and fouled and never let down get into any kind of major momentum. Any time there was even a, like I think Pat Havern had six top over frees, did he? From yeah, yeah. twenty five meters out, um, like people mightn't like it, but that kept Westmead in the game. It's it's like down thrive off goals and look, obviously Westmead said if we don't concede any goals, we have a chance. I th- I thought the Westmead goal kept them in it. It was poor defending, really poor defending, and and. You know, it was a it was a massive score, but like when when things were when things were tough, it just felt like down with no substance. Absolutely, yeah. no You know, yeah, it's yeah. Really disappointing, I'd say, from from a, a down supporters' point of view. Okay, it was it was frustrating, Tony. Frustrating. That was led led made a good point there too as well. Like you know, there is a serious like similarity to a lot of players. Serious similarity, and like Carol Kane, like I I, I actually was laughing because some of Carol's articles last week. Comparing down to Derry, I thought there was a wee bit of unnecessary hype, hype or, that he'd sort of maybe put on them, you know, and a bit, uh, probably a bit unfair. Down don't have the same quality of player as Derry. Like, down do not have a Shane McGuigan. They do not have a goalkeeper, first and foremost. John is a great lad, a brilliant goalkeeper, but he's not at the level of Oren Lynch or Sean Patton. Like, right? He, you don't have a Connor Glass. You know, you don't have a Brennan Rogers, you don't have a Gareth McKinnon. That's like, let's be honest, Tony, we don't have those players. Like, you know, and the lads that are out there are playing for down at the minute are doing their best. No one can take that away. No one can argue because, you know, if, if they give up five or six nights a week, not I'm not criticising the player, but what I'm saying is the quality is not there. Like, it's not there. No, look, I, I would say, look, don't get me wrong. Like, you, Liam Kerr probably get on any team in Ireland. There is certain boys. But the problem is, I think Dan, Dan, <clears> man size, like, we do. And if you go to a club Butland down, like we don't have the big six foot three or six foot four Butler. We don't have the kind of yeah. last. The only last club. year's last year's down club championship. I'm involved in down football 10, 11 years. Seen it, Evelyn. Last year's down club championship was easily right, and I've seen most of the games. Intermediate, senior, in a lot of them, down, yeah. It was easily the worst club championship I've seen in down in a long many. Well, I'll, I'll give you. Yeah, I was. I was. You know, like I was in Bally Bay two years, and I thought the Monaghan club championship was a far higher standard than down. Yeah. And then, then last year, when I've always thought Neil Derry, I thought the depth of the championship was far higher yeah. level, but it was a physicality in Monaghan and Derry. And that's gone. It just, for some reason, we're not developing the big strong players. Look, I'm going to go into a wee bit of a rant here. Like, you know, this 20 years ago, or 15 years ago, in school yourself. This at Clummins, this at Mark, this at Malik, he's all played in the A competitions. Yeah. The Abbey, the yeah. Coleman's. And like I'm gonna be, uh, I said Malachy said it was plastered all over. Some Malachy were playing the Iron final. And I actually thought that was an A final. And then I found out it was C. And yeah. not in twenty years, thirty years, did some Malachy's ever play in anything Some's like football. that for years. Yeah. The Mark, the Malachy, the club, the Mar- all they keep one iron, yeah. all on the Irons. Abby, <clears throat> I, I'll be honest. I watched St. Coleman. This is February. No, it was maybe before Christmas. I went up, just had to go to Scotland Neil one day at meeting mm. one Saturday morning, and. And Pat Mahara was playing St. Comers in the first bus I don't know what it was, start of the year. And St. Comers and Pat run them out, run them out with him. Mm. And like, I'm just, just that's only a wee, but we aren't, like, I remember saying this to Jack. To be, fair, to, be fair, to be fair to St. Mark's, like, St. Mark's this year are actually, they've moved up, they've, they've won a, a year nine competition and a year 11 competition at B level. So next year, their, their third year is going to play Corn Oak and their fifth year is going to play Ranafast. But I you tell me, do you remember St. Mark's? I think it's a brilliant, but I think it's a brilliant achievement. 
You don't think you playing at that level, do you? Do you were take your, you remember, I never, St. Martin were playing B when you were there? Or involved. No, no, because the, 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 the competition have been restructured. But I know the point you're saying, Mark. The, the, there's a whole fundamental thing here too and down too, right? Development squads, okay? Schools, uh, you know, county board, administration, the whole thing, right? The whole thing is is seriously, seriously... Well, I'll give you that. Murray, it, I, I pick Murray. Murray, down Patrick. Two massive towns. Like, are we get as down getting the... As down Murray, getting the... Murray hasn't produced a single senior footballer for down 13, 14 years. Uh, Damien Rafferty. Disgracefully. Disgracefully. Do you know what I mean, Ledge? It's the biggest town in the... In the in, it's the biggest town in the county. Like. It's one of the biggest towns in the north. Like. You know, and we haven't produced a senior single Gaelic, Gaelic footballer for down in 14 years. Like. You know? I remember saying to Jack, if any, it was four or five years ago, I said, Jack, you know what we need to do? We need to get an Ulster bus thing. We need to fill it with 30 of our finest women and send it down to Cork. And I said, in about 20 years' time, we'll have... <laughs> We'll have maybe we'll have maybe the six foot fours and they laugh and I thought it was a joke, but I said, Well we need to do something because at the minute look and you know, I'm not exactly a big man, but we're, we're just wee men, but come back to game and so and I actually thought like the game of Saturday West me actually got it very right. And like Keenan Doherty is a massive player for down. He's very good, he can go and mark men, go and break lanes, and he's that wee comedy, he can get in we dark and get into space, give the wee combination of hand pass, but like West Me done it. West were happy, he's on Mark yeah. Owen. Hey, we're going to do Ronald Trill, you're going to stand, you're going to win stand the 14. And with that done, a lot of times was it took wee duck away. You know, the man that was breaking lanes, the man that was like, mm. the, again, the game against players. I know Trill, starting a few Trill people, they raved about him just how good he was. And then we tight spaces, creating stuff. And even that day in Mullingar, he was able to get up the field. Whereas West Meath the other day decided, well, we're going to pull him, that we're going to make sure he's the last man to the goal. Now, Eventually, and I thought it was very neat from down, down, down should be pushing him up. Switch, get you out, but we're happy for him to be John O'Hernan, Wee Dark, and Ronald O'Toole, the last two men. And yeah. they, because he is, he has that wee bit of gay, like probably a wee bit of Conor Lavery 20 years ago, where he's always seen the next pass. Whereas if you take Liam Kerr, like down, if you stop Liam Kerr and Saturday night down, had nothing. I'm going to say one thing, I'm going to say one thing, lads, right? And I, I don't mean this not an, an indictment of any individual or anything, but you know what really frustrates me? I think the only player wearing the proper kit on Saturday night was Owen Murnock, right? The proper socks. Now, I know, I know you might smile, legend, and laugh at this. For me, they're small things. John Wooden, the great American basketball coach, he used to talk, he used to pride himself on even looking like a team straight away, right? And no individuals, et cetera, et cetera. Timber Damer Conley, ledge, one year showed up in the vest and all the other players had a had a T-shirt on or whatever and he had the vest on. And and like Gavin didn't play him. You know, like like that's probably one of the reasons why Damer Conley didn't play a lot for them because he was that sort of, you know, individual. He was a sort of a maverick. But like, the amount of white tape and white socks, Down's colours are red and black. They're not red, white and black. Like, you know, and I remember an email having to go out to Orney a number of years ago. And this is true. There was certain players wearing white under armour, white cycling shorts, white socks. And Sean Oak had to send an email out to say, hey, Down's colours are red and black. You remind all your respective panels. And like, that's true, lads. And I know it's a small thing, lads, like, but your white socks and your skin feeds, like, it's not going to, it's not going to cut the mustard. Like, it's not, like, you know. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, go on, Mark. Go on. You probably I'll won't. Just, go on. I remember Sean Ogatti one day. He on a player in a warm up. And this thing was 2011. James actually was man. Yeah, 2011. We're about to, I actually think we're playing Mullahan on a Saturday night league game. I'll never forget it. Sean Ogatti was standing at the door going, He can't be wearing that. These white <coughs> I'm not joking you, Daniel. I'm not joking you. I'm not joking you. Tony, I'm not joking you. I would not let a young fella in school represent the school without the school shorts and school socks on. If he was wearing his club socks or his club shorts, he wouldn't be allowed. I'll give him a pair before he'd be allowed to play. Like, you know, it's a small thing, Daniel, but small things make big things happen too. Like, you know. Yeah, and look, I, I'm not, I'm not going to, I, I won't go into intricacies of, of that sort of stuff because you lads know that probably a bit better than me and be able to get the feel of the move, like the feel of the the, the humor up there at the moment, but. I, I, like looking looking at down from a football point of view, like we 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 talk an awful lot about variety and how you play and and variety. Down offered no variety really. It was it was the same 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 run run run. And we we t- we've talked a good bit over the last few weeks about having that kind of secondary kick pass option in Croke Park is necessary because it's so hard to win games when it's when it's all hardly kicked it once. We hardly kicked it once, you know. Yeah, very very little, and and it didn't look to be like I I you understand and and actually Kara Kane's article was kind of comparing some of Derry's forward play to, to Down's forward play and how they structured forward play. And I kind of don't disagree. I think there's some elements that look the same at the, at the right level. But what I will say, like to, to, to give Westmead their credit, they, they never gave opportunities for Down to get that running game going. And probably this, this ties into your point about, let's say, the, the individuals. When that clearly wasn't working, nobody on field did anything to change it. 
No, yeah. no, like like Westmead's kickout plan was empty one side of the field, put everyone yeah. all together and win break ball. Like yeah. break ball, you can lose some break balls out of luck. It was it was countless. It was, I I lost count the amount of times John O'Hara was scrambling back, and this is my argument. Last year I went to Calvin. We, we conceded every kick out and won the game, you know, because we knew Calvin were going to out-muscle us physically. Obviously, Kieran Kieran Mina, Kieran Mina, yeah, yep, but Kieran Mina's come in, Dorney, Kieran Mina's come in, and Kieran is, is big into pressing kick outs. He wants his goalkeeper to come out. That's very, very clear f- football and philosophy that he has, you know, from, from a tactical point yeah, of view. Yeah, he's trying to make, he's trying to make every ball a battle, and you can see, yeah. but down, have you even and that's, that's you grand, that's grand, but, that's that's grand but, but my, my argument is this, Daniel, like down to on a, on a, on a deep counter-attacking game, right, where they're going to run the ball a lot. So you talked about needless running ledge. So the other night, I would say Down spent seven, eight moments in that game sprinting 90 to 100 metres back towards their own goal because they lost the kick out. You know what I mean? They'd pushed so far up the field, don't they? And like that, that eight or nine <laughs> sprints That's... of 70, 80 metres is, 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 is sprint distance you don't oh, need to be doing. You know? But to be fair to West, West Meath have a very good midfield. Like they have, they have a good midfield to treat with. And to be fair, the keeper does bam ball out. If you analyse every one of West Meath's games, He's a serious kick. And, and I look, we talked about Brenton La- or Brent Rogers upon her last. It's been a good midfield. West Meath are probably as good as midfield. Like, I would put them in the top six midfield partnership. They can, they're big. You're, you're, playing them, you're playing them this weekend. So you're obviously building them up, you see. I uh, know, but not even that. But you look, even we're, we're being hard defensively. They've only can see that they're probably the best defensive record in, in, across all the divisions now on the party. Yeah. Like, attack and ways they don't. They don't. Going, but I probably regret that they don't score big. But the defensive, they are very, very good. But like, I do get your point. Yes, down pressing up, and I can see if down at four boys at six foot four and five, Correct. yes, get it out. Correct. But they don't, unless the one more that's winning ball. Ledge, big blow, big blow for for down, big blow. As an outsider yeah. looking in, do you think it's a blow to the progress? I, I, I think, I think it's, I think it's really damaging for to have two similar defeats two years in a row when in a final the, the time was as biggest. Like, and, and this isn't just, this isn't just a, this isn't just Asher, it's only a league. This is first trophy since ninety four in Crow Park. This is huge, like thirty for, for years, down, like because mm. they're not winning all Ireland. That's called a spade, a spade. This was their final. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I mean, and, yeah, might, like, and 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 the Division Four final. You know, it was like obviously Le- a Leash team. The last visit to Crow Park for Leash, they conceded eight goals today. You know, and to be fair to Justin McNulty, he seems to have got a bit of spark back in them. They're kicking the ball a lot. Uh, Ross Munley is in coaching them, Daniel. So obviously Ross will be well respected among the panel too. Uh, McNulty's obviously done a decent job. He's been around high performance setups. He was involved with McGinney for a few years as well. He's obviously picked up a lot there as well. You know, uh, but Leash probably relied on the on the on this on the trade and test that as me and you chatted about it. You know, with Paul Kingston's your Evan O'Carr. It's good footballers, Daniel. Real good. Yeah. Footballers. Yeah, the, the, you know? like there's a couple of things about the the the, the Leach performance. I mean, firstly, like Leitrim, I, I thought were poor enough. They were they turned over an awful lot of ball high up the field. They left themselves with oceans at the back to try and defend. So any team worth their salt is going to kick into that space. Now, in fairness to Leach, they took advantage of it. And look, what, what Leach probably have, and, and do you know what? This is something Down could probably do with. Leach have four, six foot three ball winners who can score playing inside you. Mark Barry, yeah. Evan yeah. O'Carroll, Paul Kingston, and okay, fair enough, uh, um, on, uh, Lowry in centre forward isn't six foot three, but he's a scorer. And I, I think that's something that a lot of teams don't have. And Leach can, Leach can have, could have, at the weekend avoid an awful lot of silly running because they were able to put crossfield passes 50, 60 metres into, into two or three lads who were able to score. Yeah. Now, that's not going to happen in any sort of competitive game. Like, I mean, like Luke Leitrim's big day out in Croke Park and whatnot, and they wanted to have a go at it. Leach won't get that kind of space and, and the kicking game, we'll call it, is not going to work in reality when Leach come up against a better team. Let's call it spade a spade. But you can only you can only beat what's in front of you and they're clearly a good step up above Division 4. And if they keep that, if they keep that team, like you look at Kieran Lillis, Mark Timmons, like that's fine, a lad. Like Mark Timmons must be fucking older than you are, I'd say at this stage, he's nearly 40. And, <laughs> and Kieran Lillis, <laughs> Kieran Lillis is, is, is the same. He's 32 or 33. So like they have a spine of experience and, and there's yeah. some nice spillers around that. But they're scoring forwards. And if they get enough ball, they'll score. But Next, they'll probably be enough to stay in Division Three next year. I'd it? heard, I'd heard a couple of rumours that the Leitrim boys were, 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 were having a good time and Monday night past there in Dublin, you know, after getting promoted. But you can't blame them either. You can't know, blame promoted them. and you know, you know, you know yourself, Ledge, having been there. Those moments don't happen all the time for counties like Leash and, or sorry, for counties like Leitrim. So you have to take them moments when they come. But lads, listen, the championship kicks off this weekend. I'm sure we'll see us back on. We'll we'll get chatting about it. That wraps up the the, the league action for the year. Um, it's it's a bit of a mad one because you're in the championship now straight away. This this way is it this week, Mark. This week. 
This yeah, like... it is. I think it's right. It's like a, you're right in the championship okay. teams playing National League Spain less than a week later. I put it this way. It's nearly two, it's nearly two, two soon. Yeah, you remember, remember yeah. like you're going to the championship games with coats and hats on, you know, whereas four or five yeah. years it was a good wire. But look, I just want to make this point make no mistake. Like, we're going, like, we're sitting now with uh, Sam McGuire and Tassie Cup. I do believe the next couple of three or four years, we're going to have three and four tiers because yeah. if Sunday proved anything to you, there's a gap. There's a massive gap. You look at Dublin, Derry, there's maybe six or seven teams. There's a middle block, maybe with 10 or 12. There's another block. And like, I don't, I never want Gilly Pop to go this way, but it's going to go this way. Because you look, I think, Harden have maybe five tiers. And you'd yeah. never want Gilly Pop to go that way. But of uh, them Harden five tiers, everybody has a chance of winning something or playing on a big stage. They call it a big stage. If you look at football now, the football championship, realistically, look, Derry, Derry, or Dublin, Maybe a Mayo or something might creep in their goal and maybe are winning Sam. You could look at Talisman Cup. If you're there's the Talisman Cup and down he's maybe down end up you could pick your top two or three and that yeah. leaves a pile of teams with nothing. Yeah, that's true. You know, and there's it's, it's getting it's, awful, it's, going, like, it? it's got look at, at the what's, minute, that what's that ledge? No, I'm just saying it's 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 such a deflation after coming down from the game yesterday. And all of a sudden now we're looking into, and no, listen, I was, I was one of those Leinster counties, but looking into Leinster, looking into Munster, yes, you'll have some good games in Ulster, looking into Connacht even, and being like, well, what have we got now for another two months? Yeah. Like, it, it's, something doesn't make sense that yeah. Westmead, Desi Dolan made a really good comment at the weekend, and, and it's, it's very valid. Westmead, are, I think they're, if, they, if they continue winning, they're going to be playing six weekends in a row. I mean, right. like, that, that, that's crazy. When do lads get to stop and enjoy Winning the division three, like when did they get to have a couple of points after that? Like, yeah, it's it's it's, it's so condensed and it's 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 a lot to do with the provincials ultimately. Like, we're, we've basically got a waste of time in three counties for the most part. And it's ah, uh, look, something Mark said, something has to something has to yeah, to just stop with this because it's not it's not sustainable. Like, yeah, like if yeah. you look, sorry, so, yes, they proved it. There, it's there's why why is the Dublin Derry game so good yesterday because probably two teams at a similar level, attitude and all, athletically conditioned. Like you, that, that there. Well, I'd say, I'd say, I'd say to the Leitrim Leash game, like you know, which was sort of a bit obscure because I think, I think it was the occasion for Leitrim too. Like, but Leash probably wouldn't do that to Leitrim if they were playing in Carrick Central. Leitrim beat Leash a couple of weeks ago, you know. But yeah. every final, every final was tight, you know. Every final was tight, like you yeah. Know, but they're up the levels, and there's four different yeah. levels. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, you yeah. know, and like it just, I mean, it's just it's going. And you, you never would have wanted to see it, but it's going. Like the big teams are getting stronger and better. And unfortunately, the small teams are young, like small teams now, small counties, is the best players make themselves available to play county football. Most definitely not. Probably not. Yeah. Not that. Ulster says no, boys. That's the problem. What's that? Ulster says no. That's the problem. Or you have to say no. Without the Ulster. Without the Ulster teams, you'd have nothing, Lich. Without um, the Ulster teams, we'd have a normal tier championship. At, like at, at the minute, at the minute, though, to be fair to Ulster, at the minute, like there, there's a lot of seriously good coaching going on, lads. You know, and I know, I know, even Daniel, like it's an interesting one. Just even the, the coaching event that I would run in school every year, like with 425 coaches in it, we're talking about counties and we're talking about sort of standards and things. Yeah, like you, I will actually find because I take the list of names, spice of the clubs, the counties. You will actually find Donegal, Derry, and Tyrone have more coaches there. Than our own county down, like, and it's on people's doorsteps. You know what I mean? And it's, it's mad, like, but it shows you the, the thirst and the hunger there is for coach education, and you know how how advanced. Like Turlock would always say to me, "Just Ulster's always way ahead of the curve." Like, you know, and and I do think that Ulster coaching in Ulster is at a, at a higher level, like, than, than it is anywhere in the country. Like, I, I would stand by that. Like, and I think junior All Ireland club champions, intermediate All Ireland club champions, and and senior All Ireland club champions, and now you have Derry National League winners, Donegal National League winners, down promoted. You know, it's 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 not in a bad it's not in a bad spot, Ulster football at the minute, like you know. Yeah, to no to listen to be fair, it's the only it's the only games you'll probably be tuned in, into with real with real intent, like Ulster. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll chat we'll chat about it next week. But Monaghan, Kevin, this weekend, and the rumor is Rory Beggins back. So, <laughs> does he have a helmet on? He's definitely Rory. starting this week. Well done to Charlie Smith, Mayor Bridge, big contract with New Orleans Saints. Looking forward to red zone next year. Seems As a man, you actually have to claim the fame of him. No, 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 no. Listen, I think we'll finish the show on that note. <laughs> Listen, to <that>. <laughs> <laughs> lads, thanks a million for 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 having tonight. We're chatting soon. Good luck, lads. Bye, bye. Good luck. Bye.